in uh, every movie there is a specific point where the main character, the hero, can go back. He only has to go further to achieve his goal. This is named the point of no return. Me, as a film director, I work a lot with this point of no return, but also I find that we have in life many of these points of no return. 1989, 1st of April, joke, a young lady was going to give birth to her son. But the doctor told her, go home, you come tomorrow, the time, the time is not yet. Turning point. So she go home, but meanwhile, the time has came, and the day after she she came to the hospital, she gave birth to her son with some complications, and in eight months from that point, she and her husband find that um, they have a good boy, laughing, moving, crying, but not walking. Turning point. So they have gone to the doctor, and the doctor says, congratulations, you have a handicap. But you know, you are young people, you can leave him to the orphanage, and you do another one. But they didn't agree with this anymore. No returning point. They gone to this, and they accepted Teddy as he was. After five years, my mother died from breast cancer. The real no returning point in life. So, uh, after one year, because you know, that's why I love films. Because it's like in life, up, down, up, down, I will tell you. Next year I uh, met a nice lady, my therapist, who was the first one who made me walk. And guess what? She became my second mother. She was the lady that yelled at me at no other woman later yelled at me. But this was for my good. No returning point. I had somebody who made me big. When I was 12, a phone ringed. It was a film director, Radu Gabriel, who was looking for a young boy, disabled, to play in a movie. Well, my mother answered, and uh, uh, he asked her, do you allow Teddy to play the main character? No, I don't know, let's, I have to ask him. I was not idiot to say I don't. Of course I did. <laughs> so I played main character. Turning point. Because that was first moment when I felt I had something to share. Few years later, like three or four, I entered high school in a, uh, a class who was developing um, projects, like filming projects. So I had to shoot some shorts, but because, because I had a great background in NGOs, a phone ringed again and asked me if I can do um, social commercial, TV commercial for a pregnant women campaign. Fortunately, at my 16, I didn't know too much 
in pregnant women, and I asked myself how I do this. So I took an egg, I put it in the front of the camera, one egg, 50 seconds zooming on it, heartbeats on the background, and the message was clear and sharp. Your child needs attention before he's born, born. Consult your medic, meanwhile you're pregnant. This was the only uh, great thing I did in 15 years of filmmaking. I mean, <laughs> that, that commercial was awarded, and so I took not any more rewards after. But in that time, I understand something. I understand that people need inspiration. We need positive stories. And guess what? I know how to deliver them. No returning point. Because this is one of our biggest no returning points. When you find what suits you, what you are living for, or maybe less than that, what you want to do or to try in your life. So for me, it was that because I, I understood I had to make movies that inspire. So my um, profession as film director for inspirational stories it's not so much about where I put the camera and how I yell to the actors. I do I don't yell. I have assistants to do this. <laughs> I am the good guy. I like the more. If I had to change something at one of my films, I would change the director. <laughs> so, uh, is that, is that how, how you tell it? But, for me, it's how I understand the world or, or the subject that I will shoot the movie about. So for me, it's more about, about transforming and looking for positive and for inspiration in the, in the fields that others see only dramas. So I'm going to take you through few of my films, of my film stories. When I was in the university, I uh, shot a film, a documentary, about the first community dance in Romania. By the way, they tell me I talk better in English than in Romania. More clear, I tend to know this. So, I hunted Youngster, youngsters, uh, majority from orphanages, from the streets, combined with deaths, with disabled, and combined also with children from rich families, uh, made a rehearsal for uh, one month for a choreography, a mix of uh, scenic movement and choreography on the Stravinsky piece, Firebird. So they rehearsed for five weeks and after this they played this piece on National Theatre of Bucharest. Be sure that for them this was the no returning point of the lives. Because for the first time in their lives, somebody came to them and showed them, you can do this. You are not a bunch of kids from the street yelling. You are an artist. If you find the firebird in yourself. So for them, this was the point of no return. But what revelations I took from this, besides of their story. Four months later, I had to finish the film, to edit it, 
I was causing a personal financial crisis, and at that time the tax in Bucharest, the cab was two lay or two lay and a half, so I had to pay like 100 lay every day to go to my parents and come back next morning in seven hours to the university where I where I was cutting the film. So I took the decision that I have to, for one week, to sleep in the university, on the floor, because <laughs> there was not fancy places. So I spent my uh, seven lay each day, splitting between um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Nice results were found there. But of course, I could borrow some money, but I didn't want. I wanted to take the six figures. Why? Because then, without wanting this, then I understood the greatness of what the kids were doing. Because most of them maybe were used to sleep on the floor for their whole life. And then one day, somebody came to them and picked them to be the next artists and to find their strengths. So the, revela the revelation was this, we can give to others no returning points by discovering the inner firebird of themselves. But I know you like turning points, right? What are these? Happens. Guess what? You have, we have, fortunately, a, 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 a returning point in ourselves every half of a second. Because our heart beats, beats like this. I like very much this metaphor. These are my favorite turning points. When you hear this song, this means you are alive. And if you are alive, you can do anything you want, or almost, for you for the one you love, for your hobby. And guess what? This is the perfect map of life. Up, down, up, down, upper, down. Totally down. But guess what? It's good to be like this, because if it's flat, we are point of no return. And what the way I love these turning points? Because they have rhythm. And they have the rhythm quite the same as the clock, as the clock, as the, the, the time. This means we have to keep our heart and our life in a good timing by the choices we take, by the way we live. It has intensity. And this is the thing that I love most on the people and especially on the women, the intensity. And you can see the intensity of anyone in their eyes. By the way, they are looking. By the way, they are talking with you beside the words. And I love intensity. And you can see metaphorically where you, was, where, where you were up, where you were down, how we managed to gain again, how and or what made you fall. And I think this is the biggest turning point that we have to be aware of. So uh, I want to share with you other projects, other film. 
in which I had some breakthroughs. In Romania, or in my English, I call them revelations, because it sounds better in Romania than breakthroughs. In the middle of Cluj, it's pronouncing like this Cluj, <laughs> in the center, right near the theater, right near the big square, is the Cluj prison for women. There are 800 women, aged from 18 to 80, who are staying like 14 or 16 in a room. You enter the, the gate of the prison, you can hear all the things around, all the noise, all the cars, but you can't see anything. I stayed in Cluj two years. I like the food and the art and the ladies. And um, <laughs> that's why I was going to 800. <laughs> so uh, there was a group of women in the prison, 20 women, who had been part of the a creative writing project. They learned to escape their minds through the walls by writing, writing characters, stories, whatever. So in the end of the project, we came to shoot a documentary about this, these ladies. We managed to take a few of them out with gardeners and all the stuff, and to bring them to our studio when we, when we made something like a reading club. So they read uh, the best writings of themselves. So in particular was a theme, a subject that was referring to my story. Each one's stories, of course, most of them were were refer referring to the point, the, the no returning point, where uh, they entered the prison. So, in these stories, there is one that uh, touched me more. I'm untouchable because I'm a film director, but sometimes I try to be in there. Um, there was uh, an Irish lady, 40 years old, that two years before, she was the one who was in church with feeding the prisoners. She was uh, working um, in uh, the catering company who delivered the uh, food for the prisoners. So she came to sign the contract and uh, the management of the prison took her and gave her a tour of the prison to see something. And she saw the cells and she saw the cell number one on the ground floor. That was uh, the most fancy cell because they had a TV and shower and she thought it's all right. It's okay, so she signed the contract, she ran. Two years later, she made an accident by car. And she enters the prison as a prisoner. Turning point. The same lady that before of that was feeding the prisoners. The cell number one didn't look any more fancy. It felt cold, ice, and the time frozen. So how do you call this? Faith? Destiny? I call the, this the direction of God. For me, God is the biggest director. That's why the heartbeats 
and how our life goes. So I found that what we call uh, equilibrium, balance, is not this. For me, the balance, the, the equilibrium, is if we accept that in ourselves there's the good and the evil both, so we take both by the hands and go with them together. You know, because we want from us to be only happy. And when we are happy, we are not expecting, expecting the hard bits to go down. And we, when we are down, it's very hard for us to climb again. So what if we accept this is the real turning point root in life. Even I made dozens of, of films on inspirational stories on social fields. Of course, I'm not only a film director, I'm a man. So I have my downs. A few years ago, I had a big turning point that obviously at that time for me was no returning point because we tend to see in our turning point some, some end, ends of the root. So, so I was very, very down. I couldn't work, I couldn't anything when a company came to me and said we want to make for us a video about happiness and uh, we need you to play in it, to endorse. I said, no, shit, you, you really have chosen the moment. <laughs> I was never as happy as I am now. But you know, I'm a film director. I love your $10,000, so let's do it. So I said, OK, it has to be a day in my life, and in the end uh, of the of the root of the day, I have to to do something uh, super, something extra. I want to skydive, <coughs> to jump with a parachute, because guess what? At that time, some images of falling were uh, given to me often. So for two weeks, I tried to find a good skydive team, and I, I was looking for the courage also to do this. It was extra season. It was before April, so no skydiving. But uh, three days before the shooting, I understand that I can skydive, so I had to small to, to fly it for the first time a little plane. Okay, nice. I was not doing this before. So I took on myself the brown trousers. So I was going to brush off where the flight was to place. In the moment that the plane took off all my past bad period was gone. All my fear, all my anxiety, or whatever it was, I don't have a diagnostic, was gone. That was my no returning point. And this is a real no returning, returning point for anyone who tries to fly a little plane. Imagine a two seat, this two seat plane, like you feel in the middle of you all the fart of wines. Yeah, then you have to, to fly. It's like you are flying yourself. I had a good instructor there, 60 years old, 6,000 hours of flying. And he told me the biggest and the most important 
self-development lesson that I took. I don't trust self-development by books or stuff. I trust self-development by the things you do and the players you play. So he told me this. Here in the air, you fight with the wind. You don't know where it comes from. You don't know where he pushes you. But you have to keep the plane straight. And I said, no shit. <laughs> Isn't the same thing down there on the earth? We don't know where the bad part come from. We don't know when the, when the turning point or the points of no return arrives. But we have to keep this plane flying. And I challenge you, please, when you find your no returning points, even if they scare you, even if they frighten you. Keep the plane straight. Excellent. Thank <laughs> you.